Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today, I'm going to show you how I take my big pack and how I'm going to load it and get a lot of this stuff in there and the way that I do it. Okay, as you can see right here, I take a change of clean clothes and all that kind of stuff so you always have a change and I put it inside this watertight sealed bag all right I have my cook set here and then this is my uh, sleep system and I do have a uh, army wool blanket right there just in case if it is cool weather I live in Florida so it would have to be pretty cool for me to use that but I'm going to show you how I put it into the bag and I also have A wet bag that I'm gonna put inside here and then after I get everything in we're gonna go through the pack I'm gonna show you which I what I have all right so everybody just stay tuned let me reposition my camera and we're gonna get going on this I'll be right back What I'm gonna do is, all right, this is already in a bag, all right? So I'm gonna put my clothes, more than likely that's gonna be one of the last things that I will need, all right? Because you wanna make sure that you can get to your tarp and your sleep system and the whole nine yards, you wanna get that out first. I want that out of your bag first and your clothes and cook stuff and everything else can go towards the bottom. So we're gonna put this in first. Next thing we're gonna put in is our cook system. This is your, your Coleman. Um, basically comes with a little handle and everything else. I've done videos on this. Uh, it does have a little bowl and a cup in here and a spoon, okay? So we're gonna put that down in there. And we're not gonna probably, hopefully, need this kind of stuff until we're actually set up and all good to go with our, our cooking stuff and everything else. This here is just like a you string it up between two trees, it's almost like having a little clothesline and stuff, but you, it's got different types of hooks and stuff, so if you wanted to hook up some of your gear, you can also do that. And um, like if you had wet clothes or something like that, you could place this up over the fire if you had the trees were just about right, and you could take and dry some of your products and clothes. Or if your sleeping bag or something like that got wet, it does have hooks and stuff on it, so you could hook it up. Okay, um, one large contractor bag. Always keep one of those down in the bottom because those have so many things that they can be used for, it's not even funny. Now, we go to the totally waterproof bag, all right? This is an army uh, waterproof uh, uh, clothing bag. Um, you can actually take and put this stuff in here and I've watched uh, videos and stuff where uh, if you seal this up correctly, which they do give you the directions, I don't know if that's going to come out on the camera or not, if you seal it up correctly and uh, you can float across a, a river or something on this thing because it just will not leak. So we're going to get this right down in there. like so. Now, just for demonstration purposes, because I probably would not bring this here in Florida, um, but this is a wool blanket that I can put down inside of my um, my hammock, okay? It's a sunnier hammock. Um, I love this thing. I took it on a trip uh, uh, last year, and um, I tell you, I'll never sleep in a tent on again, and I'll never sleep on the ground again. That thing there is worth its weight in gold. So if you never try a hammock, I would highly suggest that you do. All right, now I like to have my sleep system inside of something. So this is my hammy, and this is my sleeping bag. It's an Eco Pro. Uh, Pro. Uh, it's a lightweight, 220. Um, like I said, I'm in Florida. Um, 
I even used this when I went up north and it got pretty chilly and I stayed nice and warm. So, but I am hot blooded. So if you're not, you may want to try to find something that's a little bit more comfortable for you. This is a um, Ecotech Outdoors, it's a high little, um, you just blow this thing up, it just takes a few puffs and it gives you something to sleep on inside your hammock. Now none of this stuff is really very expensive. I mean there isn't nothing on this table that I've put in this bag yet that's probably more than uh, 40 bucks. So it's not like the top of the line gear, it's not like something that's going to break the bank. Um, I really don't have any of that and I also have the, um, the small little air pillow. It's a little pillow, you just blow this thing right up, you can get it to the right comfort, and you're good to go. Now, this here is, this would be a luxury. This is just a foam mat that you can set on or kneel on if you had to do something out in the woods. And this way here, if it's damp or anything, uh, you, your rear end stays dry and uh, it's just a little comfort. Pick these suckers right up on Amazon for $5.99. And actually we're just going to slide that right down on the side there because it's just a piece of styrofoam. Now this is my tarp. All right, on my tarp towards the top because if you're going to come into a situation and uh, rain's coming or if it is raining or wherever else, the first thing you're going to have to set up is the tarp so you can get your gear and stuff underneath there then you can continue setting up your camp. Um, this one here is a gold armor. Um, I got it right off of Amazon. It does have all the different tie outs and everything and hopefully come soon we're going to be out in the woods and I'm going to show you how this thing works. <clears throat> Now, once you get all that in there, I fold that right over, like so. And I still have plenty of room in here, because if I'm going to go out in the woods, um, i got to have room to make sure I have uh, for camera gear and that type of thing. Now, I'm going to reposition my camera, get a little bit closer here so you can see what's going on on this pouch. and. We're going to show you what's in some of the pockets. Be right back. Okay, now we're going to start with the pouches. All right, we're going to get in here and we're going to show you what I got in here. All right, in this little pouch, I have just a small little emergency stove, just on a chance that if something happened and everything outside was soaked, I had some way to um, get a little fire so that either I could boil some water if I needed to and or cook cook with all right paracord i never leave home without paracord now you know some people might want to leave home without paracord but i always make sure that i have enough because you never know what you're going to run into if you're going to be out in the woods you know it's just one of those things that could come in really really handy and that's all that's in that pouch right there on the back, I just attach a, a stainless steel cup, you know, just for drinking, um, coffee in the morning, that kind of thing. Now, in this pouch, all right, we have all you soldier guys out there, you'll know what these suckers are, you know, some MREs. This one's a peony with a uh, vegetable so uh, sausage crumble and a spicy tomato sauce. This is hash browns with bacon, peppers, and onions. All right, we got a couple of uh, Mountain House. Got some biscuits and gravy and a beef stroganoff. All right, now little luxury coffee. I don't leave home without the coffee. Yes, it's instant coffee, but. It beats not having any coffee at all if you are a avid coffee drinker. Now, <clears throat> I have a little collapsible 
cooking stand. All right. A lot of this stuff is pretty lightweight. This pack, when I put all this stuff in it, weighs 25, no, 26 and three quarters pound. Now this here's a, this is definitely a luxury. All right, so you guys can all do whatever you want. I got this right on Amazon. And um, basically it's just like a little cooking mess kit. Uh, you get a cutting board, you get knives, you get tongs, uh, scissors, uh, spoons, that kind of stuff. So, you know, this will come in handy if you're out and you're going to do some fishing or something like that. And um, then you got some place and some way to clean that right up. Take and seal that right up. All right. <clears throat> On the bottom down here, there's a little pouch. If you guys can see this. And in this pouch here is just some fire starters and a couple of uh, uh, snare traps for small animals. And that's all that's down there. Just kind of a, some backup emergency supply stuff that I just keep down in the bottom. All right. Moving over to this side here. <clears throat> over here, I have a few pieces of fat wood. All right, I have my SOG saw. It's a small one. That's about all you need if you're just going out. You know, I'm not so living out there. And then I have the shovel system that goes with it. And as I just did a video and stuff, you know, uh, SOG makes some really good stuff, especially for the beginners. As you can see, this one's used, it's dirty. That's from my trip last year. Never did, I guess, take that sucker out and clean it. <clears throat> but it's being used, so. The one downside to this bag is they leave these little pieces of material in there and they get caught on there. And you have to, you really got to get a pair of small scissors and go in if you're going to get a pack like this. Um, <clears throat> and just go in and trim those suckers right out. Now on the very top here, all right, first thing that's in here, this is my, my cover for this whole bag. Now the bag is water repellent. It's not totally waterproof. So I bought a cover to go over it. It is a 100 liter bag. All right, so that's the first thing. Then I have, I always carry a spare belt. It's an old belt, but I carry it just on the chance that I may need it because you could use this for a lot of different things. I have gloves, a couple pairs of gloves, <clears throat> I have a rain poncho that you can also dub into a shelter if you needed to. And that's just kind of the bare necessities. Said the pack isn't completely full and with everything that's right in it right now um, you're looking at roughly um, I forgot to put the food back in here 26 almost 27 pounds which really isn't too bad um, then of course I've got to add um, some camera gear and that, but I have seen and uh, on a couple of other channels where they have talked about um, they have a separate thing and they carry the camera gear separately, not on their back. So their back is basically for their gear. 
that they need to survive out there and then they carry everything else on the side so I have to make that decision on what I'm going to do um, I still have to decide uh, because I have a small hatchet and a folding saw which the folding saw goes right down through here like this which is nice because it's a mole pack design on the back and then the hatchet does the same thing and then this all locks in right together now the weight was without the tools um, you know so that's just more weight that you're going to be carrying um, I do have um, a regular axe um, it does have my side sling here so I could just throw this over my shoulder and carry it in that way if I choose to do that so it's not so much weight on my back and so just remember when you're doing your pack like I was starting to say before all right put what you're not going to need right now in the bottom all right you're not going to need your pots and pans first first thing you want to come out of your pack is always make sure that your tarps on the top or your rain gear okay make sure your rain gear is on top then your tarp and that way that you can get set up in an emergency situation if rain's moving in a bad storm's coming in um, you know you want to get at least a tarp up so that you can get underneath it and then you can take it from there you know this way you can keep your gear dry yourself dry you know that's the whole key to the situation here um, so you start in the very bottom put any clothes that you're bringing with you your cooking um, you can put your food down there uh, you know you're going to want to keep your munchy stuff maybe you know your loose stuff like beef jerky and crackers or cheese and pepperoni whatever it is that you want to bring you want to keep that maybe loose and towards the top all your other main food that you may be bringing in as far as if it's freeze dried or whatever it may be <clears throat> keep that you know towards the bottom or in a separate pouch all right you want the stuff towards the top that you're going to need right now you know i can attach water bottles to this i do have a canteen system that i probably would carry uh, because i can get a lot of water in that and that is also stainless steel so i can boil in that if i need to to sterilize my water um, i also do have a sawyer mini that i can bring and, and incorporate into my pack and make it a little bit better, a little less stressful as far as having to make sure that you're boiling the water. But there are some situations where you still have to do that even if you filter it, because if you just don't feel comfortable where you're getting your water from, you don't want to take that chance. So, <clears throat> you know, I haven't incorporated anything first aid into this yet. Um, I do have a small pack that is attached to one of my other packs that I move from one pack to the other and I just kind of like bring that with me right now. Um, I have my large first aid kit, but that's not something that I'm going to basically carry uh, along with this. Now this here is for my hurricane preps or emergency situation where I do have to leave my house and I have to get out. All right, um, this way here, I have a lot of first aid and I'm bringing it with me. You know, I have a small mold pack that goes from one pack to the other. If I'm gonna be out in the woods, just your basic boo-boo kit. You know, I don't have a lot of, you know, all the stuff that is in that kit, in that kit. So, this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners and this has been Backpacking 101 and how to pack your pack. Now, there's, a lot of people out there like to do things different, um, which is fine and dandy. You can do it however you want to do it, but always remember you want at least your rain gear and your tarp on the top. That is so important because if it starts to pour down rain, the last thing you want to do is one, get drenched, and two, get your gear totally soaking wet. So if you're someplace where you can throw up a tarp real quick, you know, maybe have your guidelines already tied out or whatever, so you can just pop it right up, boom, 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 and you're underneath. And it, maybe you just have to hang out there for a little while until the rain stops, and then you can take the tarp down if that's not where you're going to stay for the night, and you can move on down the trail. You know, but just get you out of the weather, keep you dry, and keep you warm. You know, because you start getting wet, unless you're down here in Florida where it's going to feel really good. Um, 
you know, it's not going to be a good situation if everything gets soaked. So, this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners, Backpacking 101. And until next time, I will catch you all on the flip side. Thank mm -hmm. you.